Welcome back to Your Health television program. I am Dr. David Morwood. I am a board certified plastic surgeon. I'm very pleased you could join us for this third segment. During this third segment, I like to discuss body contouring. That area is one of the most common areas I deal with in my practice of plastic and reconstructive surgery. It's in high demand, lots of interest, and what I'd like to do is present some basics and summarize some concepts of body contouring because as I said, it's one of the most common areas that I am involved with in my practice of plastic surgery. To begin with, there are two major categories of body contouring. There is the closed approach, which is essentially liposuction, and there is the open approach. The open approach is where we make incisions and we're able to remove big blocks of skin and fat and also tighten up muscles on the inside. And of course, cl the closed approach, as I said, is essentially liposuction. That's where we make very small incisions and insert a tube called a cannula. We can connect the cannula to suction, and as we, uh, as we can bring suction to the fat cells underneath the skin, and as we apply suction, we can mold, shape, and tailor as we do that. Uh, it's important to remember that there are advantages and disadvantages to each method of body contouring, and I'd like to s take a few minutes to summarize. First of all, liposuction. As I said, in liposuction we make very small incisions to place a cannula or a tube and attach the tube to suction. Now there are some variations of liposuction, one involving a laser probe or a laser tip, uh, what that does is generate heat and energy to help dissolve or melt fat, and then it is removed. There's also something called a vaser. What that does is deliver a high energy ultrasound to the fatty layer, and also emulsify or dissolve the fat, and then remove it. But essentially, uh, all those different types of liposuction at our disposal and in our bag of tricks and in our, in our bag of tools what th the principle is essentially the same. The insertion of a tube or cannula into the fatty layer and we remove suction, vacuum the fat as we mold, shape, and tailor it externally as we go. Um, the most common areas I would think for women are under the chin and around the neck. Also the so-called saddlebags which is uh, some, somewhat of an awkward term, but on the sides of the hip, the abdomen as well for women. Those are some of the areas that are more common for women. Also, the flanks on the back, there's upper flanks around the bra lines and the lower flanks just sort of above the hips. Those areas um, also are common areas that I will see and women are concerned with re body contouring and they'll be concerned and oftentimes be reasonable candidates for liposuction. So again, the area under the chin, around the neck, the uh, sides of the hips, the abdomen, the upper and lower flanks, and other areas at times such as the thighs and calves and e even the ankles sometimes will be affected uh, positively and we can reshape and contour and sculpt with the use of liposuction, lipoplasty. For men, I would say the most common areas, again, are in the submentum or the, or the area under the chin, uh, to a certain degree around the neck, and the so-called love handles. Those are the flank areas, the anterior flanks, the sides of the abdomen. I would say for men, those are the most common areas that I see for a request of liposuction. So what are the advantages of liposuction? The advantage of liposuction, first of all, is that the scars are very small. We need to make an incision about as long as uh, a pencil is wide or a pen is wide so we can put in the cannula, we can get the cannula in. So the scars are short. We tend to place them in areas that don't show uh, very much and they're relatively inconspicuous. For example, if I'm going to do liposuction of the submental area, submentum which is under the chin, I'll usually make one small incision in the crease uh, the submental crease just under the chin, a very small incision. Then I'll also make an incision where the earlobe meets the cheek. I'll make one on each side. And that way I can pass the, the cannula or the tube in a sort of honeycomb or cross-hatching way. 
That way I can be much more effective at molding, shaping, tailoring as I perform the liposuction. So the advantage is we can, well, the, the advantage is the scars are quite small, relatively inconspicuous, although we, it does leave permanent visible scars. We can, plastic surgeons have learned how to hide the scars or minimize how conspicuous they are. Uh, also, we can remove a lot of fat cells. I think liposuction actually works. It can vacuum out fat cells. The fat cells do not return. Uh, and I think that's, a, that's something that I want to discuss for a moment. In general, after adolescence, the number of fat cells that we have in our body is relatively constant. Before adolescence, we can add actual numbers of fat cells to the growing body. After adolescence, the number of fat cells that we have is relatively constant. So what happens when we gain weight is that the existing fat cells get larger. When we lose weight, those fat cells get smaller. What liposuction does is remove actual fat cells, and so they're not there to get larger or smaller anymore. Now, sometimes I'm asked, well, if I eat a lot or if I stop exercising, doesn't that make the liposuction effect go away? Well, if your fat cells get larger, if you don't watch your weight, uh, certainly a person will gain weight and get larger. But the person does not regain the number of fat cells, and the number of fat cells does not increase. Again, the number of fat cells that we have ad after adolescence is relatively constant. So again, I think that the biggest, the two biggest advantages to liposuction are, number one, the scars are quite small. Number two, we can remove lots of fat cells, and it works. Whether it's with laser or vaser or what I like to do is traditional tumescent or super wet technique. That's when I inject lots of numbing fluid, a very dilute solution that helps to loosen up the fat, constricts the vessels, and helps to minimize any need for anesthesia. Uh, it makes the fatty layer numb and the overlying skin and underlying muscle numb. And so we can remove lots of fat cells that way by vacuuming them out. And again, it's, it's not just putting in a vacuum. It's not just putting in some sort of probe and turning on a machine. That's not the way I like to do it. I prefer as a plastic surgeon to mold and shape and tailor as we go. I think that gives better results, which leads to higher patient satisfaction rates. Now, the disadvantage to liposuction is that we can't remove extra skin and I can't tighten up muscles on the inside if someone needs that. So then we can talk about the open approach to body contouring. The open approach to body contouring, things like tummy tucks, thigh lifts, arm lifts, etc. That's when long incisions are made and we remove big blocks of skin and fat and if needed we can tighten up muscles on the inside. So again, for example, in a tummy tuck I make a long incision, I can remove a big block of skin and fat, tighten up the muscles on the inside if needed. However, the downside is it leaves permanent, visible, long scars. Again, permanent, visible, long scars. Now, the truth is, as plastic surgeons, as a plastic surgeon, we will try to minimize um, the prominence of the scar. We can try to make the scars as best as possible but scars actually are unpredictable. I have seen people with scars that you can barely find. I've also seen scars that are, that are heavy, almost like someone put a, taped a piece of rope on someone. So scars are relatively unpredictable, even within the same person. A person can have, a, say, facelift scars that you can barely find, and then they might have a tummy tuck scar that's thick and heavy. So it's, they're, they're actually unpredictable. However, of course, we use plastic surgery technique and we do our best to minimize the prominence of the scars. But in summary, for the open approach to body contouring, the advantages are we can remove big blocks of skin and fat, we can tighten up muscles on the inside if needed. The downside is it's more of an operation and it leaves long permanent visible scars. However, for someone who has lots of extra skin, or who needs muscles tightened up, or who prefers to have big blocks of skin and fat removed, the open approach can be very satisfying to the patient who's looking for some body contouring. Now, I talked about 
tighten up, tightening up muscles on the inside if needed. Let's talk a little bit about that. In summary, underneath the fatty layer, the fatty layer lies underneath the skin. The skin has essentially two layers, the epidermis on top of the dermis, and there's the fatty layer. And underneath the fatty layer, there is the muscular fascia and the muscle. The fascia is like gristle. For those of you who eat steak, you'll know that the tough part, sometimes at the end of the steak, it's almost like leather. That's fascia, and that holds the strength that has fairly robust blood supply, and it invests or covers up the muscles. On, um, for example, in our abdomen, there's a strong wall of fascia on the outside or exterior surface of the muscles. The muscles, the muscles are holding the, the gut in place over the peritoneum. So for example, if, some, if a woman gets pregnant and her muscles stretch out, uh, a high percentage of the muscle after delivery can be strengthened and restored to its original length uh, with exercise, proper diet, etc. However, if the fascia, that very fibrous, tough collagen layer is stretched out with pregnancy, it, most of the time that stretching out and loss of resilience of the fascia is permanent. So even with exercise, the fascia will not come back to its original resilience or size or strength or shape. It's a little bit like stretch marks. Uh, many of you have seen boys or girls go through rapid growth phases and they get growth marks, stretch marks. Uh, after pregnancy, some women will get stretch marks on, the, on their abdomen around the skin that gets all stretched out. That's a sign that the collagen bonds have broken and they've come, they've busted apart. Well, as you know, it's very difficult to eradicate or reverse stretch marks. Well, once the fascia uh, that's covering the muscles or investing, the, investing the, the muscles gets stretched out, it's very difficult to reverse that with diet and exercise and weight loss. So if someone has a stretched out abdominal wall or if the muscles, the rectus muscles that run from just underneath the rib and sternum down to the pubic bone, if those two, those two rectus muscles uh, are strong, but the fascia between them is stretched out, that's called a rectus diastasis. That's a separation of the big, of the six pack muscles. So there can be a space in between where the, the fascia is stretched out. And you can do all the sit-ups in the world and you'll strengthen the muscles and restore muscles to their original tone or almost the, the original tone and strength and size, but the fascia will be permanently stretched out. So in that case, when we do an abdominoplasty or tummy tuck, after making a long incision and after removing a big block of skin and fat, the fascia can be tightened up or shored up. And I do that with sutures, typically permanent sutures, something that's strong, and that will stay in permanently. And what, what the design is and what we try to do is to restore the original surface area uh, of the fascia, to bring the muscles closer together and to, re and to reverse that rectus diastasis. So the components of an abdominoplasty or tummy tuck are incisions on the outside, removing big blocks of skin and fat, and number two, inspecting the, the fascia overlying the muscles to see if that needs shoring up or uh, improved strength. And that's done with sutures, and we just do that mechanically. We'll bring the fascia closer together, we'll bring the muscles closer together, and kind of shore up the uh, stretched out fascia. It's a little bit like taking a cinch in the waist of a jacket or, or making the waist of pants smaller. You just, we can just shore it up with, with heavy suture under direct vision. Now, an extended abdominoplasty or extended uh, tummy tuck is where the incisions go to the back a little bit. Um, oftentimes, there'll be some extra skin and fat in the posterior flanks, and so we will want to extend the incision to go partly into the back. That leaves a longer scar, but of course, we can remove additional skin and fat. A mini tummy tuck or a mini abdominoplasty is where we keep the incision relatively short just um, within the diameter of the hips and we don't go 
outside the hips and we can keep the scar relatively short and relatively low if a person does not have a lot of skin to be removed. And that way we can, we, we can remove a block of skin and fat, we can tighten up the muscles on the inside, but the scar is relatively short. Sometimes I will offer to a patient liposuction only. Sometimes I will offer to a patient the open approach only, for example, which is a tummy tuck. Sometimes they'll get a combination approach. They may need liposuction and they may need skin excised. It all depends upon what they present with, what their goals are, where we're headed, their safety of the procedure, their tolerance, etc. That's why I like to tell people that we design a custom approach for their surgery, for their abdominal rejuvenation or for the face. I think uh, the, best, the best satisfied patients or the highest degree of satisfaction comes with a custom designed, custom designed approach. If you'd like more information about this, please go to drmorwood.com. That's D-R-M-O-R-W-O-O-D.com, drmorwood.com. I have an upcoming seminar on body contouring. Once again, this is Your Health radio and television program. I'm Dr. David Morwood. I am a board-certified plastic surgeon. Thanks so very much for being here. Your Health television program.